So Backcountry Horsemen started in 1973 when the Forest Service was talking about kicking horses out of the Bob Marshall. And rightfully so, because we were making too much of an impact on the resource. The party sizes were too large. We were not taking care of the uh, our trash properly. We were leaving too much of an impact, overgrazing. And so some rules went into place, which were good for the Bob. Party size went down. Um, we, t we learned a lot about leave no trace. And uh, now, um, we know how to go in the backcountry and and not leave those impacts. I'm Stu Sorensen. Started in the backcountry horseman in '73. Uh, the first meeting was at the at the grade school and uh, in the gym and uh, rolling cheek, Ken Osk and. Uh, Denny Swift. Denny Swift. Yeah. Denny Swift. Yeah. yeah and then, That's uh, the, three, the three that started. Delane Fulton was the. Delane Fulton. Yeah. 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 But the um, yeah, that was right. Some of the founders there. Yeah. They were the founders. Yeah. yeah. My name is June Burgoff. And uh, my first recollections is uh, getting ready to become a, a chapter or to start of it uh, was in the first interstate bank down in the basement. And, we were all sitting on all of these metal chairs and um, the meetings were quite lively because we had uh, controversies over what we wanted, you know, as starting up what we wanted. And uh, the big issue there was uh, to begin with, um, they weren't liking a lot of what the Forest Service was doing. And we wanted to try to convince them of some of the ideas that the backcountry would have, backcountry issues. And so the time went by, and because of these issues that we had, and then joining together with the Forest Service and doing these boots on the ground, which I think was a very, very big part of getting the clout that we now have was actual physical work. And we did. We got out there with the crosscut saws and uh, started working with the Forest Service, and all turned out well. And I guess uh, we can be proud that we now, after all of those years, uh, 1973 to now, that we have celebrated 50 years and are still expanding. Nation 36 wide. states, yeah. They were tying, tying the trees and eating the bark off the trees and digging the roots up. And the Forest Service said, you know, we can't, we can't afford to police this. We're going to shut it down. And they shut down the Drew Basin. Of course, you can't. That's when they to shut this the day. That's when they shut the jewel basin down. It's too much damage. You can't have it. And, the, and so, we thought, whoa, it's going to spread to the Bob Marshall. So that's when about when we got started. That's what started the back on your horseman. Yeah. <clears throat> then there's another thing that happened, like after the, all of this abuse thing. Then the, the backcountry horseman kind of got on the bandwagon, and then they said, okay, let's start educating. If we're going to go back there, we have to be a role model. And so we started educating, and, and uh, there about came the High Line and uh, the way to have campfires and where to camp, uh, distances from water. And, uh, and, and I believe, truthfully, that without continuing with that, we're going get, to still get blocked out. You know, so yeah. looking into the future, we've got to be real careful of how we go about this, staying in the backcountry. So you can't take it for granted. No, right. Yeah. 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 Many, live on your laurels. <laughs> how many how many miles would you say you've uh, 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 traveled in, in June? Okay, a lot of it was on work projects. Um, that's a very hard question to answer, but I, I can say that um, our weekends, me and my husband, a great horseman, from the time that the we started going in in 1968. We moved here in 67. First trip camping, uh, hunting in the Bob Marshall was the next year. Got ourselves two horses and went on a <laughs> learning experience. And uh, so every year we go on uh, at least one week trip, different wildernesses, different places. Uh, every weekend, much hunting, uh, many wildernesses. It's hard to estimate miles, but time-wise, uh, 
that was our recreation. Any any time that we had, we were gone on a horse. And, and Stu, how many miles? Oh, he, roughly. <laughs> you know, I kept track in the park. I had 8,000 miles of the pack spring in the park. But, but I didn't keep track in the Bob Marshall. I, I, I started in 65. I worked for Russ Bates Outfitters, I was Harrison Crick. And, I worked, and then the next year I worked for uh, uh, Glenn Reaver and Vic Miller at Independence Park. And I worked for Harry Rose at Black Bear. And I worked for, for Lee Ross at Black Bear for many, many years. And then I worked for Spotted Bear Ranch. Diamond R. You know, how many? How many? But is is there a? Tra can you think of a trail that you haven't traveled in the Bob? I've tried to do them all, and, and you know, quite a few years ago, I did hundred miles trips with the Boy Scouts. Right. Summer, and we pretty well got it covered. I don't. There isn't much. My dad was one of the four founding members of Backcountry Horsemen. His name was Ken Oss. I uh, was taking typing in high school, so they thought it'd be a good time for me to practice. So I got to type the Constitution and the Articles of Incorporation on a little manual typewriter in Roland Cheek's office. And my, pet, my dad and Roland would stand there and go, oh, there's a typo, <laughs> typing away. So, you know, our whole family was involved from the beginning. It's not just the four founding gentlemen because all of our families were very actively involved. And my parents, um, you know, it was it was their life project. Well, my mother grew up in Haver in the Bear Paws and she, they always had horses. They rode them to school and everything. But my dad was never around horses until we moved here, which was in about 1968 and he bought his first horse, and it was a two-year-old unbroke Appaloosa. <laughs> so that's how he started. And we never had enough horses for our family. It's sort of like, you know, we would go into the woods on our vacations, and we would have at least two people on a horse. And, you know, we had that Appaloosa, then we had a great big horse that like two or three of us kids rode. And then we had to borrow horses, and. So, Which but we do. just, we may do, I was thinking about it the other day because we would go in with um, Russ and Burl Garvin all the time. That was our little family trip. So that's seven of us. I don't really know how we did it because they had to move every day. My parents always moved every day. So we packed up the whole camp. We never had a tent. No, we slept out on the ground in sleeping bags, but they, we had the best food always. I was thinking about that last night. How did they get all that stuff in there? I don't know. <laughs> I know. Greg Schatz, I am the youth program chair for the Backcountry Horsemen of Montana and the youth committee chair for Backcountry Horsemen of America. And, and what, what does that mean? What do you do? So in Montana, I do, I collect information to share with chapters so that if a chapter wants to put on a youth program, they have some ideas to start with. And we, we also have, we also collect people from around the state to help chapters that may not have enough members that can put on packing demonstrations at summer camps like the Boone and Crockett, um, Magruder, uh, Glacier Institute. And so uh, we do that. And we also put on two packing summer camps for kids, for teenagers. Um, one comes without Indian Meadows and one goes into Badger 2 Medicine. Manti is a piece of canvas seven feet by eight feet that you put your gear in when, to get the gear to camp. And the beauty of a Manti over a pannier is that the Manti is way less expensive. And so when you're starting out in horses, by the time you get the cost of the horses and the trailer and the truck and all that kind of stuff, you can still get into the woods way cheaper with Mantis than with panniers. I was a barrel racer. I did, um... I was down in Texas and I did some cow stuff and like I've had here and there oh, some nice. experience. Yeah. 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 And uh, how many trips have you gone on with the uh, backcountry Ooh. horsemen so far? I wouldn't be able to count. That many? Yeah. Probably a hundred. I don't know. Over the years. Oh, really? Yeah. I go with Greg and Deb all the time into Spruce Park. Um, we ride as much as possible every summer. Yeah. And what's your favorite so far? Favorite Ooh. ride? Um, 
Blackleaf Canyon. Blackleaf Canyon mm-hmm. is very pretty. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful out there. Yeah. 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 That whole country is pretty cool. Yeah. It has ticks, though. It does. <laughs> and so, what was the biggest challenge as far as learning to do this kind of work? Um, patient, probably, because you have to be really calm around horses. And you have to be able to stay calm under pressure when there's chaos and things like that. And that took a lot of practice for me because I tend to panic and just drop everything. And you can't do that with a horse. And so a lot of like, okay, there's, you know, a wreck or something, somebody freaking out. You have to stay calm. And that's been my biggest challenge, but then also my biggest growth. 